In 6.1, we're going to start working on factoring out the greatest common factor and factor by grouping. So, by definition, factors, these are objects. They're nouns. They are numbers, variables, and or quantities. Quantities can be anything in a grouping symbol that are multiplied together. Find all possible ways to factor 12x cubed. Examples, 2x times 6x squared. Multiply it to two factors. I could have 12x times x squared, two factors being multiplied together. We could have 4x times 3x squared, two factors being multiplied together. In fact, any combination of the prime factorization, 12 breaks down to 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2, x to the third is 3x's. Any combination of these individual factors put together are factors. We're going to look at the greatest common factor, otherwise known as the GCF. You'll hear me say the GCF a lot. That's what it means, greatest common factor, is the largest factor that is common to every term. So looking at some pairs and triplets of numbers, we're going to ask ourselves, using our Kazinta rule, what number goes into 12 and 18? What's the biggest Kazinta number we can find? So if you make an upside down division box and ask yourself what's the biggest number that can go into 12 and 18, it's a 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, 6 goes into 18 three times, so therefore the 6 is my GCF. There's nothing else I can f divide out from the 2 and 3, they're prime numbers. 24 and 32, now look at a different approach. My upside down division box, let's say we just recognize a 4. 4 goes into 24 6 times, 4 goes into 32 8 times. 6 and 8 still have a common factor of 2, so we're going to divide that out. Take out the 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times. When we finally get to our bottom row, where there is no more G common factors besides the 1, then all the numbers on the left side get multiplied together, and that's our GCF. It's an 8. And we can apply the same rule with all three numbers. What number can go into 16, 24, and 36? I see a 4. 4 goes into 16 4 times, into 24 6 times, and 4 goes into 36 9 times. Even though you can take a 2 out of the 4 and 6, I can't divide 2 out of the 9. And the same can be said about 6 and 9. I could divide it by 3, but I can't divide it into 4. So we're done. My GCF is the 4. Now, I want you to see these numbers here because we're going to see them again. Factor the following polynomials by GCFs. These are the numbers from the previous examples. I just put variables and put some plus or minus signs in here to separate them. So we saw here our GCF was a 6. You break down the 12x to 6 times 2x. You break down the 18 to 6 times 3. These two 6s come out together as the common GCF. We put it in front of the parentheses. What's left over, the 2x and the minus 3, go in the parentheses. So I'm always going to call that the leftovers. We saw with 24 and 32, our GCF was an 8. 24 is 8 times 3a. Plus 32, 8 times 4b. Circle those 8s, put them in front of the parentheses, leftovers, 3a plus 4b, in the parentheses. Here we said our GCF between 16, 24, and 36 was 4. Break them apart, 4 times 4x squared, plus 4 times 6x, minus 4 times 9. 4s go to the front, leftovers in the parentheses, 4x squared, plus 6x, minus 9. Those are my leftovers. And if you look at this closely, we are actually doing the distributive property backwards. Multiplying in the 6 gets you the 12x minus 18. Dividing the 6 out to the front of the parentheses from every term is finding your GCF and rewriting it in factored form. Two terms, one term because of the multiplication. Two terms, one term because of the multiplication. Three terms, one term because of that multiplication right there. So factor the following polynomials by the GCF. 
Between 12x plus 3, I see a GCF of 3. Break it down. 3 times 4x plus 3 times 1. 3's go out front. 4x plus 1 is my leftovers. 4a squared b plus 40ab squared. Now we have variables here that can be the GCF. So to do the variables, we're going to break this down as 4ab times an a, 4 times ab times 10b. There is an a and a b in each term. What makes the variable a GCF factor is the, G, is the variable to the smallest power. That way we know it divides into both terms evenly. So here's b to the first, there's your a to the first. They're part of my GCF. So always, when you have a variable in your GCF, it's always to the smallest power. So 4ab out front, a, and the plus 10b, my leftovers, in the parentheses. 6, 24, 18, all divisible by 6. Then there's an x in every term, x to the smallest power, x squared. That's my GCF. Now, one technique that I like to use when I do my factoring here of the GCF is I'll write it out front, kind of skip this step here, and I'm now going to divide it out from each term. So 6x to the fifth divided by 6x squared. 6s make it a 1. x to the fifth divided by x squared. Divide like basis, subtract your powers, x cubed. Minus 24 divided by 6 is a minus 4. x cubed divided by x squared, subtract your powers, x to the first. Minus 18 divided by 6 is a minus 3. x squared divided by x squared cancels out. There's my leftover. Three terms, now one term. In this example here, I notice that I have a 3, a 15, a 6, and a 9. They're all divisible by 9. But I also notice that 3 out of the 4 terms have a negative. So you can take a negative 3 out as the GCF. Then look at your x's. Find the smallest power. Here's x cubed, x cubed. Oop, we got an x squared. Take that out as the GCF. y squared is the smallest. So there's my GCF. Now again, go through and divide all the leading numbers by a negative 3 and subtract 2 from all the powers on your x's and y's. So we'll have 1 x to the third, y squared's cancel, so x cubed. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 will be a positive 5. Subtract 1 from, or 2 from 3 and you'll get x to the first, y to the first. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. 3 minus 2, 1. 5 minus 2, 3. There's the powers on my x and y. 9 divided by negative 3 will give me a minus 3. x squared divided by x squared cancels. 4 minus the 2 when dividing the y's gives me y squared. 4 terms, now 1 big term. You can also have a quantity be the GCF. Notice what's common between these two terms. Here's the first term, here's the second. The x plus y in parentheses is my GCF. I divide them out, I'm left with 2a minus 3b. So we're going to take this GCF concept and now do factor by grouping, which is doing three GCFs. So to start this off is that you're going to notice factor by grouping is done when there's no GCF in all the terms. x cubed, x squared, x to the first, no x, can't take out a GCF of an x. 5, 1, 15, 3. No numerical GCF. So step one is to cut the terms in half when you have four terms. Now looking at the left hand side, we're going to take out the GCF, which is going to be an x squared. All right, that will come out to the front and with the minus sign, that will leave me my leftovers blank minus blank. And this format on the left side has to be the same as on the right side. GCF blank minus blank. That's determined by the signs right there. So we take out the x squared, divide that out from our x's, subtracting the powers gives me 5x, x squared divided by x squared is a 1. Looking at the right side, the GCF between 15 and 3 will be a positive 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5 and bring the x with it. Negative 3 divided by 3 is a minus 1. 
So once we do the GCF of the left and the GCF of the right, you're going to notice that both of these parentheses have to be the same all the time. If they're not the same, then this four-term polynomial is prime. So that's step two, is to factor out the binomial GCFs. That's the one that comes down on the left, outside. And then what's left over is x squared. From the left goes in the left blank. The GCF of the right plus three goes in the right blank. And now it's factored. All right, look at some more examples. Here you see our x's are in descending order, just like the previous problem, we cut it in half. And we're going to have plus, plus. So that's my setup. Left GCF will be a 2x to the smallest power, x squared. If I divide that into 2x cubed is an x. 8x squared divided by 2x squared is a 4. Now remember, we said this binomial has to be exactly the same over here, so put it in. And that forces my GCF to be a positive 1, because I already have the x plus 4. So plus 1, think of it like this, 4 divided by 4, positive 1 x divided by x, positive 1. The two binomials, they're my GCF as a quantity. Left GCF, 2x squared, left blank. Right GCF plus 1, right blank. And now we're done. Now, this next example shows that even though my powers are not in descending order, you can still cut it in half and factor by grouping. So here we have a plus. So we're going to start with plus here, but it still has to be a plus here, even though these are two minus signs. What that indicates to me is that my GCF over here is going to be a negative. So looking at the left side, we're looking at a GCF of 2x, because 2 goes into 8 and 6, and x to the smallest power, 1. Divide it out. 8 divided by 2 is 4. x to the fourth divided by x, x cubed. 6x divided by 2x is a 3. These have to be the same is over here. What's my GCF? Well, negative 21 divided by a positive 3, negative 7. Negative 28 divided by 4, negative 7. That's my GCF on the right. Take the two binomials, factor that out as the GCF. Left hand side, GCF 2x goes in the left blank, minus 7 from the right GCF goes in the right blank, and we're done. Be careful when they throw multiple variables in because sometimes things can be out of order. We'll just switch things around. Don't panic. I'll cut this in half. Looking at the left side and right side, I see nothing but plus signs. So we'll have our binomials with pluses. GCF of the left is a 3 and the x. Divide that out, I get 2a. And then 3bx divided by 3x leaves me just the b. 2a plus b must show up over here. So 2by divided by b is just 2y. That has to be my GCF on the right, and it's going to stay positive. My two binomials that are the same, factor out as the GCF. Left-hand side, 3x, goes in the left blank. Right-hand side, GCF plus 2y goes in the right blank. And we have it done. Four terms again, multiple variables. Just take your time. we got a plus sign here, so it's plus. And again, two minus signs, just like we saw above we'll have to take out a negative GCF. Uh, 6 and 10, we can take out a 2, and we can take out a W. 6W divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. W is canceled, leaving me 5X. So copy that over here. It, oh, wait a minute. 21 can't be divided by... Wait a minute. My X and my constant, they're switched around. So negative 21 divided by 3 is negative 7. Negative 35 divided by 5, yep, it's negative 7. So normally we like to have the x terms first, then the constant, so we can switch these around when we factor it out. We'll put it down like this. 5x plus 3 instead of 3 plus 5x. GCF to the left tube, w in the first blank, minus 7 in the second blank, and we are good to go with 6, 1. 